What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Comically Boston. Today is episode 134 and we have a good one for you today. We're going to be talking about all those Oscar winners. Currently, it is Sunday morning when I'm starting to film this. Sunday afternoon-ish. But we got some news to talk about, so let's get right into it. Avatar The Last Airbender, I have already broken down a couple weeks ago on my Comically Boston episode. If you want to hear my thoughts on Avatar The Last Airbender, go back and check that out. But... We have heard news from Netflix that season two and three has been green lit, so expect to see more from that show. And even if you don't like the first season, maybe it gives them a chance to better themselves and better the show in the second and third season. So I'm excited to at least know that they're going to get a chance to finish the story. There also has been a little bit of uh, news and photos coming from James Gunn and some people over in Norway that Superman is now filming out there, so probably getting some real nice exterior shots of you know the, the snowy tundra for the Fortress of Solitude, so it's not just going to be you know, CGI is going to be real stuff and practical sets, which I think looks so well. We'll talk about Doom Part 2 a little bit and just how beautiful it really is and why it's so beautiful. Uh, but something else I'd love to see, that physical media keeps on coming. I do have, I did buy the three of them. They're still in their packages. I haven't even opened them yet. But Loki season, the complete first season on physical the complete first season of Mandalorian and the complete second season of Mandalorian. So I have some of the physical media, but now they have announced that the Falcon and Winter Soldier complete first season is coming. And then it says the complete first season of Moon Knight's coming as well. And the Moon Knight cover just looked great. His costume's such badass. But I'm really excited to see a season two for Moon Knight, so I'm hoping that comes sooner rather than later. But... I love that uh, we still got some physical media in a days where it seems there's no physical media at all. Recently I've been playing The Last of Us Part 2 again, but I've been doing the director's commentary, so I've just kind of been running through with New Game Plus and with all the game modifiers on, just wiping people out and just kind of playing through faster. And it's not it's pretty fun like that, but I do like when you just have to get supplies and you have to tiptoe and you have to do stealth because you don't want to waste all your ammo and stuff like that. But uh, I've yet to do the Spider-Man 2 New Game Plus, and that looks pretty great. And the new suits that have come out are look pretty awesome. But the main thing that's making me want to go back and do it is that they updated the look of Toby's Spider-Man suit. And just, it looks phenomenal now. Like, this is how I remember the suit looking in the movies, you know? And uh, you're able to do the, those suits in different cut scenes now. So you can do, like, the scene from Spider-Man 3 where Toby's got the red suit underneath and he's ripping the venom off. You know, it's just a great uh, shot from the now game that's paying homage to the old movies and shit. Really love to see that. Uh, recently... I've been watching some TV shows, Formula One, Drive to Survive, I watched their fifth or sixth season. Of course, Max Verstappen's still on top, but that show's just really good for somebody that loves cars and just a show that's like not too engaging, like the next two shows I'm going to talk about, and they're shows that you can kind of just put on and just get what's happening. Um, shows that don't really have too much subtitles that you have to be paying attention and reading to be able to get it. Like the next show that I'm going to talk about, Shogun, has its first three episodes out so far, and I've loved all three of those episodes. That show's been very intriguing. Uh, into the second season for Tokyo Vice, episode six, Tokyo Vice has been a show that I've been absolutely loving so far, and I can't wait to see more of it. We also have uh, X-Men 97, its titles released and that's coming up March 27th in just a few weeks we're 16 17 days out by now and uh, the first episode's name is going to be fire made flesh the second episode is going to be a split episode called Montendo and life death part one the third episode will be remember it April 10th the fourth episode will be life death part two the fifth episode will be bright eyes which is probably referring to rogue and her country accent the sixth episode will be tolerances extinction part one and that will be a three-part series of episodes that will lead us right into the finale the finale will be season finale may 15th so we're starting end of march and we're going all the way into may uh with x-men 97 and i love the way that that looks and i love that they're like announcing the 
Oh, actually, I, I did that wrong. So there's 10 episodes, and the first two episodes will be a two-episode premiere. To Me, My X-Men, and Mutant Liberation Begins. And those will both drop on March 20th. So coming up in 10 days. Uh, so that's exciting stuff right around the corner. And X-Men 97, I'm, I'm like into season two, re-watching uh, X-Men, the original series. So I'm excited to see where they go with this and how similar it will be and if you need to watch what had previously happened. Um, but, you know, X-Men 97, man. just good. It will be good to have a Marvel show back in the rotation uh, while I'm also finishing my other shows like Tokyo Vice, Shogun, um, some more serious shows. But it's nice to have things that like you can look forward to later in the week, you know. Uh, things that you can look forward to coming up this summer, June-ish, I believe. We're going to be getting... Season 3 of The Bear, which is shooting right now, and that looks awesome. We're going to get Season 4 of The Boys, and we're going to get Season 2 of House of the Dragon. So I am so excited for that. House of the Dragon was one of my favorite shows for shots like this, where the guy's just in a, in a smaller dragon, but there's like a, a, a man on the back of that smaller dragon. And then there's also a man on top of the bigger dragon, but it is just the scale of this show is so crazy and how big these freaking dragons can get. And that's Vagar up there, freaking, and it was like in a cast of lightning. You could just see the shadow of this giant thing overhead, like, oh man. <laughs> but also some things you can look forward to, some movies that are coming out later this year, uh, the things that I'm truly excited for, March 8th. Uh, so this is actually already out. I gotta really go see this, but Love Lies Bleeding with Kristen Stewart and Katie O'Brien and Ed Harris just looks hot as hell between the two of them. Katie O'Brien, I have a weird thing for her. I think she's gorgeous. So I'm like, all right, I gotta go see it. But it looks intriguing, and I think that's from Rose Glass. Uh, but also this one I saw the trailer for the other day when I was at the theater from director of Bullet Train, uh, Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt in The Fall Guy. And that looks just action-packed but also hilarious and ryan gosling i have a huge man crush on so he's just amazing you know how can you not have a man crush on him uh, but real quick i just want to talk like I, I mentioned in my doom part 2 review and i'm not going to talk spoilers but doom part 2 is so beautiful right and the difference between that and avatar the way of water is beauty because avatar the way of water is beautiful but when you're watching it you're questioning how the hell james cameron did this because we know it's all fake and we know it's all motion capture it's almost like a video game that looks so unreal but doom part 2 looks so amazing in almost a crazy way because it almost feels real because there are so many practical sets and they actually were out on the desert and they're doing these crazy things and but then it's also a thing like the cast isn't these aliens that we don't like we see zoe saldana in uh jake sully's face underneath there i'm forgetting the actor's name right now but we see their face but we know that it's not them because it's a computer generated on top of their emotions where these are just these guys faces like seeing josh brolin javier bardem and timothy chalamet in these movies like oh I, like i loved the cast in this opening shot where like he does that like I'm still trying to figure out how he did this because this has to be a real rock wall and I'm I'm wondering if it's one guy and they're just like but they all kind of move differently so I don't know how he did this shot it's just like these all these guys just float up the side of this thing and the music in the background is just go 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 like it's it's nothing like that we've heard before or seen before and like then there's the love re relationship between Zaya, Zendaya's character Chani and Paul and they're doing their first dance together in the the sand walking and it's also then this the last setting of the movie is like the only light in this entire room in this entire like uh throne is this cross coming through the ceiling like a, a like a almost like a religious cross of light that's beaming down uh austin butler's fade ratha he, the whole scene with him, I, I can't wait to watch it again just to see that scene again. Like, he's just so good and he's so, like, hilarious when he looks and goes, I should drown you in that tub. <laughs> and that should make me laugh every time. But the sense of scale, like, go see this on the biggest screen you can, IMAX, because IMAX adds that extra bit of screen that you can see in like this scene right here where he's calling the giant worm that he's going to ride and he has to go down like halfway down this dune and you like are watching him walk down and it's like st 
deep as hell, and this is a real sand dune. Like, this isn't some set. Like, this is, they're out in the wild, right? Like, it, it's, it's nutty, man. It's freaking nuts. The scene after that battle with Fade Ratha, Austin Butler's character, and then the scene with him and Leia Sadu. I've been, wa I've been just dreaming about him. Like, god damn, that was so provocative. But also, like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, just great. <laughs> but this final scene where, Timothy Chalamet's, you know, telling it, like, taking control and becoming the the villain almost, becoming the Anakin Skywalker with his dark sideness. <sighs> Ooh, like, it's just so, so good. But that's it for right now. I'm going to take a little break myself. I, I figured, you know, why do this all at once and stress about it? My boss is on vacation next week, so I, I'm going to be busy all week. But I, I'm not busy on this Sunday, you know, just a lazy Sunday. So I'm like, hey, let me uh, make a couple videos. Let me start some videos, right? Because I'm not going to be able to finish this video until the Oscars at tonight at, what, 7 Eastern time for me. West Coasters get to start at 4. Fuck them. So I'm probably going to watch my movie of the day so I can get that in before the Oscars. I'm probably going to watch uh, one of the best actor nominees, Paul Giamatti in Holdovers. He, you know, I've been hearing great things on that, and I've been putting that one off. But stay tuned. Movie re reviews coming to the channel. But uh, to finish off this video, we're going to talk the winners of the Oscars and talk about how Kimmel did hosting and stuff like that and talk all things Oscars in one moment for you guys. But it's going to be a few hours. Might have changed my shirt. Who knows? I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, everyone. I know you're ready to talk about the Oscars. Now, the next morning, it's crazy windy Monday here in Massachusetts. And I'm trying to bang out this podcast for y'all. So let's get right into it. And some of my favorite things that happened at the Oscars last night. I think Kimmel did a good job hosting. Uh, Florence Pugh looked absolutely phenomenal. She's just so goddamn gorgeous. No matter what she wears, I'm like, this woman I'm obsessed with. She's just so friggin' flawless. John Cena's presenting naked bit was hilarious. Uh, Emma Goss or uh, Emma Gosling, Emily Blunt and Ryan Gosling's presentation. I think teasing their new movie Fall Guy, but also Oppenheimer and Barbie are presenting now together. Uh, two people from respected best movies of the years, you know, biggest movies of the years. Their bit was hilarious. They've been shitting on each other. The Batman bit with Arnold Schwarzenegger, Danny DeVito, and Michael Keaton was hilarious. I'm just Ken. You know, as a performance live at the Oscars was hilarious. Ryan Gosling running around in this pink suit with the other Kens dancing on stage. He had Slash on the guitar. I'm like, Jesus Christ, really? Uh, you know, going around, having starting in the crowd with the pink lights with Margot herself and Greta Gerwig going crazy. He's running around and Emma Stone singing and shit too. Like, it was just a good time all around. Like, it was just a good, uh, all around good ass time. You know what I'm saying? But let's get into some of the winners. The first award of the night was Best Supporting Actress. And that went to The Holdovers, Davine Joy Randolph. Shout out to her. She played Mary in The Holdovers. I just watched it last night. She did a phenomenal job in the movies. Very, very good. So, you know, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's kind of like a sadish, happyish uh, Christmas story, you know. And it's almost like a Grinch type of story where the guy is cold and mean and he kind of learns to have a heart by the end of it, you know, that type of thing. Uh, Paul Giamatti did a great job. I really thought he was going to win last night. But he, you know, here's a quote from the movie. You see, history is not simple, simply the study of the past. It is the explanation of the present. You know, like there's a lot of good lines in it. Uh, I really enjoyed that movie. So there's only a few on this list of people that won that I'm like, ooh, I want to go check that out. The next award was Best Animated Short for War is Over. Haven't heard of it. Best Animated Feature went to The Boy and the Heron. I thought into the spider or across the spider verse was going to win but it did not boy in the heron one so shout out to uh that director i know it's he's does great work and you know they really didn't think he was going to win that's probably why they were in japan but he did win so hey shout out him uh, i still have yet to see the boy in the heron but i want to along with all of his other animated works but i'm more of a live action guy but i'm really trying to put that aside and get into some animated stuff like spirited away and stuff that i was has been told to me is iconic and I should see. Best original screenplay, Anatomy of a Fall. That was another one that I wanted to see. 
uh, Best Adapted Screenplay, American Fiction. So, shout out to American Fiction. I've yet to see it as, as well, but Jeffrey Wright is a legend, and I want to see him. So and He's like an author that's pretending to be super, super black and, you know, stereotypical black and the whites are loving it and buying his books now and when he was just a black author writing good stories they weren't so it's like it, I think it's like a comedy but also like a, a nice movie like I don't know I've yet to see it but I, that's on my list as well uh, hair and makeup best production design and best costume design all went to poor things shout out to poor things Yorgos Lanthimos Emma Stone, Mark Ruffalo, I watched this the other night, and it is creepy and weird, but also tremendous. Like, if you're into actors, actors, movies, it, it's just hilarious, you know? It's, there's parts of that movie that I'm like, really? Like, well, they did this? But it's phenomenal. It's just good all around. Uh, you know, production and costume I knew was going to win, but, like, just the world that they built, like... I couldn't tell if this was entirely computer generated, if this was a miniature, if this was, you know, I have no idea, but it's like all supposed to be in Bella's mind, so she's on this weird looking cruise ship, and it's got like this crazy sunset going on, but it's not pumping gray, black smoke, it's pumping green smoke, you know, like, it, it's all through the eyes of this grown woman that's also got the mind of a child, you know, so it's kind of sweet, but also kind of creepy. <laughs> uh, there was one bit with... Uh, John Mulaney presenting that I thought was hilarious. He shit on Madam Web. Uh, he was presenting best sound design. He's like, without sound, we wouldn't have been able to hear classic lines such as, you're going to need a bigger boat. I'll have what she's having. And he was in the Amazon with my mother when she was researching spiders before she died. You know, like, and it got a laugh, but I really don't think people understood how funny it was because that line's not even in Madam Web. And Madam Web, like, really dropped the ball big time all over the place. And Madam Web producers are apparently mad at Dakota Johnson. Like, yeah, you hired her in the first place. That's on you. <laughs> the next award was Best International Feature Film. Zone of Interest won. That's a, won a couple awards, and I'm like, mm, what is Zone of Interest? I've heard good things. I want to see that. Uh, if you know where Zone of Interest is streaming or, or able to be watched, comment below so I can check that one out. Uh, best Supporting Actor goes to Robert Downey Jr. for his character in Oppenheimer. Shout out Robert Downey Jr. RDJ, you're the man. Um, you know, picking up his first Academy Award. Looking good doing it, and you know he's just iconic man. And the I loved the way that they had the presenters on stage, where all previous best supporting actors winners being Kihei Kwan, uh, Brendan Fraser was up there, Mahershala Ali was up there, I believe, and it just the whole group was just phenomenal. Or maybe that was I'm mixing two groups up, but the groups that they had were were stunning. I was like, damn, they should keep this format instead of like previous years they, they did it slightly differently but it is what it is you know on to the next one for best visual effects i'm super thrilled for godzilla minus one winning their first oscar and, and winning an oscar for this movie i thought it was just incredible uh you know it, it broke a bunch of records for japanese foreign speaking film in america and it made like a way more money than it probably should have in its budget but it was also like it's also not the Godzilla that we're, we're used to, like, where we have now have this Hollywood Godzilla and the Godzilla versus the Monsters universe. This is just a Godzilla movie, and it is fucking phenomenal. I saw it in theaters. Can't say enough about the visual effects, but the story was so good. I'm, I'm still waiting for this one to come out on streaming so I can see it again, because I'm it was that good. I want to see it again. Best editing goes to Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer won quite a few tonight. Uh, best documentary short film goes to The Last Repair Shop. Best documentary feature goes to 20 Days in Maripol. His speech that the guy gave for that was pretty inspiring and heartfelt and just nice to see, you know what I mean? Uh, we're talking about Ukraine and Russia still going on. I mean, like we were talking about Ukraine and Russia last Oscar, so they're still happening now. Like, that's insane and it's crazy that you know there's wars going on in the world right now we don't know practically anything of it because it's not on the news you know it's not in the the social media threads you know it's it's wild achievement in cinematography goes to oppenheimer live action short film goes to wes anderson wes anderson just did 
uh, Asteroid City, which got mixed reviews, but I kind of liked. Um, the more I thought about the movie, I thought it was hilarious. Uh, but initially, I was like, what the hell did I just watch? But Wes Anderson won for his short film with Benedict Cumberbatch, The Wonderful S Story of Henry Sugar. I've yet to watch that, but, uh, you know, live-action short film, Wes Anderson winning awards. Achievement in Sound goes to Zone of Interest. Original score goes to Ludwig Jorgensen. Shout out to him, two-time Oscar winner for for score. Uh, he won for Black Panther and now has won for Oppenheimer. Shout out to Ludwig. Uh, best original song goes to Billie Eilish and her brother Phineas for her song in Barbie. And she is now the youngest two-time winner ever for uh, two-time Oscar winner. Just shout out to her all the way around. She's fantastic. Uh, best actor in a leading role goes to Killian Murphy. I mean, I think we all saw that coming. Oppenheimer's been sweeping the the awards all year round. So, yeah, I really thought um, he was going to win this. Best director goes to Christopher Nolan. Of course it does. And best actress goes to Emma Stone for Poor Things. So her Bella Baxter won. So shout out Emma Stone. She's now a two-time winner, I believe. Uh, I believe this was Christopher Nolan's first and second Oscar win tonight. Uh, he's been nominated before, though. I believe this was Killian Murphy's first win as well. So there was a lot of first-time wins tonight that you were like, damn, really? First time? I, I would have pictured them winning more. You know what I mean? But shout-out to Emma Stone. And then Best Picture, of course, goes to Oppenheimer, which I think we all saw coming. So Oppenheimer had seven wins for Oppenheimer, four wins for Poor Things. You know, So those are the big winners on the night, I believe. Uh, but mostly going to... Oppenheimer, you know, and then a couple others sprinkled in there, but a successful Oscars and shout out to all the winners. This beautiful picture here with the winners at the end of the show with Emma Stone, Divine, Joy Randolph, Robert Downey Jr. on the left, and Killian Murphy on the right. You know, shout out to the, the winners and to the actors. And then at the after party, holy Christ, Sydney Sweeney. I'm just going to close this out with another baddie of the week. We already talked about Florence Pugh, but. Sydney Sweeney, look at her in this dress. Like she looks like the award. You know what I mean? Like she looks like the award I want to go home with. The hair looks phenomenal. She almost looks like who she looked like? Marilyn Monroe a little bit. Like is that what she was going for? But just Marilyn didn't have her, those tatas. Like oh God, Sydney knows what the fuck she's doing. But shout out to her stylist, I guess. But shout out to Sydney Sweeney as well. Those eyes, mm, those lips, those that hair. I'm obsessed. Uh, Sydney Sweeney definitely on the list for me uh anyone but you her recent movie i still have some movies like blade runner i want to see argyle uh maybe a couple of the movies from today american fiction zone of interest i might check out but comment below if you know where any of these are streaming or when they will be streaming i'd love to know these things shout out again to jimmy kimmel and john cena for doing that naked bit that was hilarious um and we have some more movie reviews coming your way this week so stay tuned for that you guys and uh Shogun episode 4 comes out Tuesday, tomorrow night, so I'm super excited about that. And uh, I will see all of you beautiful people in the next video. Peace.